Now, if you all have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am an arachnid and invertebrate guy, but I have a bunch of reptiles as well. Essentially, this whole wall behind me over here is just all snakes and geckos and uh, you know, little friends like this. I haven't made a whole lot of videos on them. I don't feature them a lot on the channel, but I've been getting a lot of requests and I got this really awesome new setup that I wanted to share with you guys. So uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today is these amazing crested gecko enclosures I just made for my little friend here. My name is Adam, this is Diamond, and you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Ooh, oh, wait, 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 that's not right, that's not right. My name is Richard, this is Neelix, and you're watching the Tarantula Collective. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you're probably uh, familiar with this guy. I picked him up about a year or so ago. I went to a, a, the Tri-State Exotic Animal Expo with the intention of getting a crested gecko because I had one on one for quite a while. So I planned on buying this guy, but I also ended up adopting a crested gecko while I was there. And initially I kept them in a Exoterra two-door enclosure. It was 12 by 12 by 18 because they were small and it fit really well. But as time went on, they started growing and I needed to get something bigger. So I was planning on putting them in an 18 by 18 by 24 enclosure, like I have my uh, day gecko right over here. She seems to really love that enclosure. It's plenty of room. But then Custom Reptile Habitats reached out to me. They knew I was wanting to get a new enclosure for my crested geckos, and they offered to hook me up with one of their two by two by three arboreal or vertical enclosures. I couldn't turn them down because I've used their enclosures in the past and was really impressed. So uh, I said, yeah, and it, it, it's amazing. Not only did they hook me up with the enclosure, but instead of shipping it, since they're not too far away, they ended up driving down here and delivered it in person. All right, so we uh, we talked to Richard a little while ago and with the new studio, we thought we'd provide a uh, bit of a housewarming gift. <laughs> a couple of years ago, they sent me a four by two by two enclosure for my king snake. And I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. It was really sturdy and my king snake loves it. So I knew that anything they made and my crested geckos were gonna love it as well. So we had provided Richard with the king snake enclosure, which is one of our four by two by twos. We came up with a combination. Firstly, we've got a little base here that elevates the enclosure, which is important. And then we use uh, a series of space Spaces and hoods. And so the spacer basically uh, hides your lights. Uh, your lights are inside. The mesh is uh, one that lets most of the UVB through it, lets about 77%. Uh, others can block about 50%, so there's an advantage in that. Plus it's pretty heavy duty mesh. And by putting your lights externally, you've got a lot more room inside and you've got a lot more room for if you use UVB. But when we were chatting, uh, Richard said, uh, you had some crested geckos you'd like to do a bit of a, uh, an upgrade. Our recommended size for a crested gecko is our three, three foot tall, two foot, two foot, which fits nicely on that. Now back in November, I had to move. I moved all of my animals out of the basement here into the new studio. And I ended up hiring somebody to help me. One, because I, I was short on time. I needed to get it all done in a day. But more than that, I also knew that those big four by two by two enclosures were not something I could move on my own. I have another one by a different brand and that was the one we moved first. And as soon as we lifted it up and started and moving into the U-Haul, I noticed that it was starting to twist. The frame was twisting, the PVC was really starting to bulge. I got nervous it was gonna fall apart just in the short distance from the basement to the U-Haul. Luckily, it did not, but I almost stopped halfway and pulled the snake out and the hide and the water dish and all the substrate and plants and, and was just gonna strip it down to the bare bones. But I was expecting the same kind of issues when I moved my custom reptile habitat enclosure. And much to my surprise, it didn't twist at all. There wasn't any warping of the PVC. It wasn't like bulging or anything. It just was a solid solid big enclosure that was really easy to move. You're driving me crazy with this tail here. So we configured this tower. We make these in Ohio, so they're very heavy duty, substantially more weight and uh, strength, if you like. And that allows us to do this type of combination. And some of the biggest ones we do are eight foot long, four foot deep and six foot high. So based on that experience, I knew that these enclosures were gonna far exceed my expectations and needs. So I was very stoked when they offered to hook me up with these. Now to be clear, they're not paying me to make this video, but they did provide the enclosures at no charge. What's important, is that the crested geckos really like it. I started off by just making the usual type of backdrop that I make in these bioactive enclosures for my reptiles. Essentially, I just cover it with spray foam, let that cure, carve out some natural looking features, cover it in silicone and throw some substrate on there and also include some good cork bark branches and, and tubes kind of crisscrossing the environment. So they have plenty of things to climb on and rest on and, and jump around and navigate the enclosure as, as easily as possible. Now, if I had to go back and do it again, I wouldn't use the substrate on the background because it seems that the geckos are having kind of a difficult time really clinging on to that type of background. I kind of wish I had done like a dry lock background so it had been more like stone 
known, but maybe we can do that in a future enclosure. But I think they're beginning to adapt and, and figure out how to climb those walls. All right, buddy, we're, we're gonna put you back in your enclosure. Cause I don't, I don't think you like being out here in the lights. Whoa, safe and sound. Let's go back home. He's such a cool little gecko. So for the substrate, I started off with the Biodude Terra Fauna, which is kind of made specifically for crested geckos and similar reptiles. I added a lot of sphagnum moss, leaf litter, bio shot, mixed it all up really well, got it nice and damp, put a layer of leaves and some sphagnum moss on top, added some springtails and isopods to kind of help keep everything clean and, and aerate the soil. And then I planted in a bunch of tropical plants I also picked up from the Biodude. Before I moved the crested geckos in though, I wanted to give the plants plenty of time to get rooted and grounded in the enclosure. So it sat there for about three or four weeks, hooked up to the misting system with some bright lights on it, really helping those plants begin to thrive. During this time, I headed over to Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures channel and checked out his crested gecko videos, where he actually goes out on location to where these crested geckos are found in nature and takes a lot of different readings and assesses how they survive in nature compared to how we keep them in captivity. And I set my temperatures and humidities to the levels that he found that they were thriving at in nature. So shout out to Dave Kaufman for that information. And, and of course, there's a few other built-in features with this one. We've got the uh, temperature gauges, they're recessed there. There's a probe, a digital probe, and uh, that allows you to monitor the ambient temperatures and of course, you got a minimum maximum as well. After plenty of time for the plants to really get themselves established, I went ahead and moved in the crested geckos. And it took them a couple of weeks to really kind of settle in and, and make themselves at home. But once they found all of those cork bark hides and little hiding places, they really seemed to enjoy the enclosure. And having this much room compared to what they were in initially seems to be a huge benefit. Now this enclosure is definitely larger than their minimum required enclosure. But I can tell you from my experience, they make use out of the entire enclosure. Sometimes I'll find them on the bottom, around through the leaves, climbing up the sides. They'll be perched all the way up the top. They'll be hanging out somewhere in the middle. I really don't think it's wasting any space at all because they, they, they really seem to like it. And that kind of goes with the whole vibe that I made a video about a few weeks ago. What I'm trying to do here is give all my animals more room than their minimum enclosure size and try to make everything as naturalistic or bioactive as possible. And having my crested geckos in a bioactive enclosure seems like a really great thing. It makes it much easier to clean and I'm much more accurately able to mimic the environment that they're found in nature. Now these enclosures, on top of being very sturdy and well-made, come with glass doors, which I like a whole lot better than the acrylic or plexiglass doors some of these other PVC enclosures come with. Another nice thing about this enclosure is that the bottom is sealed. It's silicone, so it's watertight. So I haven't had any issues with the misting system running and that water leaking down and dripping on the king snake enclosure below. The bromeliads I put in there really seem to be thriving and doing really well. And I also included some pothos and climbing vines, and they're taking a little bit longer to really spread through the enclosure. But I know the, the more they grow upwards, the more light they're gonna get, so the faster they're gonna be growing. So I'm just kind of waiting. It may take months for those types of viney type of plants to really kind of start taking over the enclosure. But I'm really excited for that to happen and I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on the progress. Now I'm not a reptile guy. There are plenty of channels out there and plenty of people like breeders and dealers that have a lot more experience keeping crested geckos. And you should definitely check out their channels if you're looking for a care video, because this is not a care video. I'm not telling you how to take care of your crested geckos. I'm just showing you how I take care of mine. And a lot of people might tell you that this size of enclosure is too big for a crested gecko. But I can tell you confidently that Neelix and Kess really enjoy their enclosures. And those enclosures would probably work for a wide range of arboreal reptiles. But they're secure, they got plenty of air ventilation, the lighting's great, the temperature and humidity gauge is amazing. I just really like them. And maybe that's just because they came in green and black and, and that's like my favorite colors. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> the, the enclosures are amazing and my crested geckos are thriving in there. I love it. Thank what? you so much. I appreciate it. It's oh, so much sturdier than the other enclosures I've used. The brand's called Maximum Reptile, and, and I, I wanted something that was like premium, that people could put in their homes, decorate it, and be proud to sort of show it off. Not something that, you know, you put in the basement with a couple of lights on it. Something that yeah. you can put in your living room, decorate it the way you want it, and be a feature. Much the same as what aquariums were years ago. Yeah. So I was always jealous. You go to the pet stores, you see these beautiful hoods and stands, and uh, reptiles deserve the same kind of profile, if you like, that you can feature them in your home and something looks really good. So we build everything up with that in, in mind. We want to try and be something that's going to last, it's quality, and very, very functional. And, very uh, cool. Yeah. Anything you want to say to your mom? Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll cut that part out. <laughs>
Now, I didn't record the entire setup of this enclosure, the, the you know building the background and all that, because I did that already multiple times, and I'll link that playlist of videos at the end of this video. As far as the lights, I've got a BioDude LED grow bulb, a UVB fluorescent light, I had to go check. And I got one of those deep heat kind of infrared lights that's uh, just above the temperature probe. But I've had this set up for months now. Everything seems to be working really well. All the plants are growing in nicely. The crested geckos seem very happy. They're eating well. They're very active in the evenings. And I love the fact that they're using those cork bark tubes as their hides when they sleep during the day. Makes them feel protected. They're able to kind of get down in the dark, but I can also view them. I can just kind of walk up to the enclosure and look down the tube and, and see them. They usually kind of give me a dirty look. <laughs> but those are my crested gecko enclosures provided by Custom Reptile Habitats. If you want to see the video where I initially brought them home, I will link that right here. And if you want to check out some videos on how I build my custom backgrounds, I will link that playlist right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> some of the shots I got of yeah. you, the spiders are crawling around like right behind oh, you. Oh, right? really? Really good, yeah. <laughs> nice. That would be awesome.